we'll continue our discussion on determination of shear strength we'll do a problem a series of direct shear tests were conducted on a soil each test was carried out till the sample failed the following results were obtained sample three samples were there normal stress values given and the shear stress at failure is also given determine the cohesion intercept and the angle of shearing resistance for finding cohesion intercept c and angle of shearing resistance we need to draw the failure envelope we know that the angle of inclination of the failure envelope with horizontal is the angle of shearing resistance phi and the toe intercept is your c value okay so what we do is from this data will be drawing the failure envelope you have the sigma axis you have the toe axis and we'll be plotting these three points these three points represents failure and if you draw a straight line connecting these three points you'll be getting the failure envelope so this is your failure envelope and now the inclination of this envelope with horizontal is measured using the protractor and it is obtained as 26 so this is your phi value and we know that the y intercept will be your c value that is cohesion value the uh, uh, failure envelope meets the two axis at this point so from this point to this point the distance is 11 okay 11 kilonewton per meter square so your c value is 11 kilonewton per meter square and phi value is 26 degrees okay and when you plot you can plot this in a graph sheet fine so this is how you solve this problem. Now we'll move on to the next experiment or next test using which we can find out shear parameters. It is known as triaxial test. We have already completed direct shear test. Now we have triaxial test. This is the setup for triaxial test. This is a very flexible, very accurate test when compared to the direct shear test. In this test, you have a cell which is made up of gla uh, glass or transparent glass and inside the cell will be filling water okay and inside the water will be keeping the soil sample around a rubber membrane okay will be inserting the soil sample inside a rubber membrane and that is kept in the water which is filled in this jar or in this chamber okay then due to this water which is present around the soil sample a confining pressure is applied to the soil sample and along with this confining pressure in the axial direction will be giving additional stress which is known as deviated stress so on the soil sample there are two types of stresses one is the confinement pressure or confinement stress which is provided through water and then there is deviated stress which is provided acts in the axial direction okay so um, when uh, this confinement pressure is not varying but the axial stress given the deviated stress will be varying and will be noting the values till the failure of the sample okay so usually the specimen is of cylindrical shape and length to diameter ratio is 2 and it is placed in this setup we have a rubber membrane and the purpose of this rubber membrane is to um, separate the water from the soil the soil and the water should not be mixing okay then see here uh, you have an enlarged figure you can see that water is getting filled in this chamber and inside this chamber you have the soil which is inserted in a rubber membrane okay and this this has a drainage valve also which allows water to go out if required right as we have already discussed Test. shear test is conducted in two stages first stage is consolidation stage and second stage is the shearing stage in this test in the consolidation stage we will be applying the cell pressure or the confining pressure it is denoted by sigma c sigma c will be acting all around the soil sample in all the directions we will be applying sigma c it is insert it is applied through the water isn't it so water is all around the soil sample so we have sigma c in all the directions fine now in the second stage in the shearing stage we will be applying the axial stress it is also known as deviated stress it is denoted by sigma d sigma d is increased and at one particular point the soil will be failing at failure 
will be uh, seeing undulations or deformations in the soil it it can it is easily observable from outside okay now after failure we will be testing at least three specimen because for drawing more circle we know that failure envelope is obtained by drawing a tangent to the more circle okay so we will be doing at least three samples because if you get three more circles it is easy to draw a common tangent okay so this is how you do direct uh, sorry uh, triaxial test and in this figure you can see that this is stage 1 stage 1 is the consolidation stage in stage 1 if the drainage valve is open then it is a consolidated test and if the drainage valve is closed then it is an unconsolidated test in the second stage it is the shearing stage in that stage if the drainage valve is open then it is drained test if the drainage valve is closed then it is undrained test based on different combinations we have cd test uu test and cu test we have studied about these things in the previous sessions okay so these are the types of triaxial tests that can be performed now one point to be noted is that for drawing a Mohr circle we need the principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 3. Sigma 1 is in the axial direction and sigma 3 is in this direction, isn't it? So, if you look at the figure in the shearing stage, initially there was sigma c in all the directions. Okay, in the, here also you have sigma 3, sorry sigma c, here also you have sigma c, sigma c, sigma c. Okay. Now, in the second stage, we are applying sigma d in the axial direction alone. So, here and here you have sigma d. So, in the axial direction, the total stress will be sigma c plus sigma d. That means, sigma 1 will be sigma c plus sigma d. And in the other direction, you don't have any additional stresses provided. You have only the sigma c. Therefore, sigma 3 is your sigma c. You will have to remember these two relations, these two equations for drawing more circles. So, these two are very important. Please take a note of this. Okay. Now, how to represent the results? The results can be represented using stress strain curves. The figure shows the stress strain curve for drain test and these figures are obtained for CU test that is con consolidated undrained test and again this results can be represented using more envelopes also. As I told you at least three samples are tested and a common tangent is drawn in order to find out more envelopes. In this figure uh, you can see that the stresses are drawn based on the effective stress value. We in the previous discussions we know that from the previous discussions we know that effective we have effective stress and total stress, isn't it? So these curves are obtained from CD test or CU bar test, and these envelopes are based on effective stresses. Okay, so the values obtained are phi dash and c dash this is for normally consolidated clay and this is for over consolidated clay i'll be explaining about normally consolidated clay and over consolidated clay in the next module we'll be studying about these soils okay now for uu test in the case of normally consolidated clay we have this value from uu test you'll be getting the values in terms of total stresses and this is the curve for over consolidated clay this is for normally consolidated clay and this is for over consolidated clay and these uh, graphs are drawn based on the total stresses these are based on the effective stresses these are drawn based on the total stress and if the curves are drawn or if the more circles are drawn based on the total stresses then the phi value obtained is denoted by phi cu and it is also known as apparent angle of shearing resistance okay now in the case of uu test for normally consolidated clay will be getting the curves like this see in this case uh, it is not possible to get an effective stress more circles so we will be basically drawing the
the curves based on total stresses okay and phi value will be zero so this is how you represent the results using more envelopes now what are the merits of triaxial test as i told you it is a very flexible uh, test when compared to the direct shear test first one is that there is complete control over the drainage conditions we can we have the drainage valve and we can completely control the drainage condition and pore water changes and volumetrical changes can be measured directly see all these points can be memorized by comparing these points with the direct shear test see in the first point uh, in the direct shear test we had no option for drainage control but here we have option for drainage control second point pore water pressure changes and volumetric changes can be measured in this test then the stress distribution in the plane is uniform in the previous stress in direct shear test it was not uniform and here uh, the specimen is free to fail in the weakest pain plane in the direct shear test we know that the failure plane was predetermined it was always horizontal but in this test the soil is allowed to fail in the weakest plane then the state of stress at all intermediate stages up to the failure is known we are taking measurements at all points so we'll be getting data and this test is suitable for accurate research work okay so these are the merits of triaxial test now what are the demerits of triaxial test the apparatus is very costly it is elaborate it is bulky it is not so easy to perform the test that is one demerit then the drain test takes a longer period as compared to that in a direct shear test we know that the specimen height is more in the case of triaxial test when you compare okay so therefore the drainage takes more time then it is not possible to find out the cross sectional area of the specimen accurately under large stresses when we apply large stresses there will be deformations large strains there will be deformations and it, it won't be possible to find out the accurate cross sectional area then the test stimulates only axial symmetric problems yeah here see uh, when we apply the stresses in all the directions we are applying sigma c isn't it so this can be stimulate this stimulates only the condition where there is same stress in all the directions okay then consolidation of the specimen in the test is isotropic whereas in field condition it can be different so these are the demerits of some of the demerits of triaxial test now we'll do a problem the following test results were obtained from a series of consolidated undrained test on soil in which the pore water pressure was not determined determine the cohesion result and angle of shearing resistance okay uh, you have three samples sample number is given confining pressure is given deviate stress at failure is also given what is the notation for confining pressure it is sigma c what is the notation for deviate stress it is sigma d okay so sigma c and sigma d are given we need to find out the cohesion intercept and the angle of shearing resistance we will see how to do the problem okay so we have sample number confining pressure sigma c deviate stress sigma d okay now for drawing or or for finding c and phi we need the failure envelope we know that failure envelope is tangential to the mohr circle so based on these values we need to first draw the mohr circle we know that the radius and the center of mohr circle is based on sigma 1 and sigma 3 so first we have to find out sigma 1 and sigma 3 we know that sigma 1 is equal to sigma c plus sigma d so for each value for each sample we'll be adding sigma c and sigma d in order to find out sigma 1 okay then we need sigma 3 we know that sigma 3 is same as sigma c so the same values are taken for sigma 3 okay now we know that center of the mohr circle is at sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 so the center of the mohr circle of sample 1 will be at 400 and similarly for other samples okay 
then the radius of the Mohs circle is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 and these are the values okay now based on these two values we'll be drawing three more circles like this okay we have the this is the sigma axis this is the two axis so this is the Mohs circle for sample 1 okay and this is the Mohs circle for sample 2 and this is the Mohs circle for sample 3. So first the Mohs circles are drawn based on these three values, these values and then a common tangent is drawn which is the failure in LM. Okay? And this line will be meeting the two axis at this point. Okay? Then we will be measuring what is the distance from this point to this point and it is obtained as 150 kilonewton per meter square so this is your c value now using a protractor you can measure the inclination of this failure envelope with the horizontal and it is obtained as 24 degrees therefore the c value the coefficient value is 150 kilonewton per meter square and the phi value is 24 obtained as 24 this is how you solve this problem an important point to be noted is that the scale taken on sigma axis and toe axis should be the same when you draw the Mohr circle. You might have already studied Mohr circle in the uh, previous sessions. So this is how you solve the problem. Okay. Thank you.